Hi everybody, this is Randy Wakeman. We're taking a brief look at the Browning A-Bolt 3, which is the economy version of Browning's A-Bolt X-Bolt line with a plastic stock and a couple other compromises for the sake of manufacturing cost. Um, this is 270 Winchester. We've taken the liberty of mounting a, a Citron S1 3x9x40 with a Hunter holdover reticle. We've got worn uh, zero MOA rail mounted which as you can see gives all kinds of clearance with uh, with medium rings. All kinds. If you want to use low rings you certainly could. If you're using a 30 millimeter tube you can also use low rings for the most part. You want to check the the objective bell diameter but as you can see what we have here is plenty of room. Anyway as uh, scopes get shorter and stubbier it's harder and harder to mount long action uh, rifles such as this. So it's a, it's a very nice one-piece rail, and uh, I'm starting to use it more and more. Um, compromises, you've got a plastic trigger and a plastic trigger guard, which kind, of, which kind of a cheesy buck mark molded into the trigger guard. Uh, on the plus side, you do have an excellent inflex recoil pad. It's a lightweight gun, nicely balanced. Um, the detachable magazine functions well it does protrude from the bottom I would prefer something that's a little more flush but uh, it's a semi matte finish not as rough as you see on some economy models um, but still it's uh, it's a long ways from being highly polished blue one thing I do like about this rifle is that rather than having a, a bolt that will flip up if caught on brush um, it's locked. It's locked when the safety is on. If you want to release it, you hit this little button right here and up she goes. You can chamber around. So what we'll do is take uh, a couple preliminary spotter shots at 25 yards. Make sure we're on the paper. I have no idea. I've not fired this rifle before. Make our course adjustments and then go to 100 yards. We'll see what happens. You can hear some noisy geese in the background. They don't seem to mind the shooting though, they're still hanging around. Um, just to give you an idea of the feeding, the magazine does go in solidly. It rattles a little bit without ammunition, but with cartridges you can see there isn't, there isn't much movement. There's no rattling. As far as, as far as chambering, it isn't the slickest bolt in the world by any means, but chambering's no problem. So we'll take a couple spotter shots here, 25 yards. We'll make our course adjustments and move it out. So this is only at 25 yards, but we need to make sure we're on the paper before we can do anything further. Well, as you can see, we're on the paper. We're, uh, we're about an, uh, an inch low, an inch to the left. Multiply by four, it ought to get us on the paper out at 100 yards. Often, three types of premium ammunition are enough to, uh, to find a load that'll give representative groups. Sometimes it takes 11 different brands or loads of ammunition, but normally three is... Uh, enough to give you a good idea. So we're going to use the 270 uh, Hornady GMX 130 grain. We also have the Hornady Superformance in Interbond and the 140 grain 270 Winchester AccuBond. So uh, we've got clean paper set up at 100 yards. We'll try all three and uh, see what if anything groups. Okay, so first up will be the Hornady 130 grain GMX Superformance loads. We'll go for the left target and see if we can get something approaching a group.
right hand target, 140 grain Winchester AccuBonds. Same 270 Winchester Browning A bolt 3. No question we've got a winner. We can go up and take a closer look. The Acubons are, are touching holes. So what a difference ammunition can make. Has nothing to do with the brand of ammo particularly. It's just a combination of the individual rifle and the individual type of ammo. Because the Hornady stuff, for example, is, well, the Superformance Interbond is the absolute best cartridge I could find for my Browning X-Bolt. That's what I took to South Africa. So it goes to show, once again, like everybody knows, all rifles are different. So let's take a close. Well, there we go. There's a first group uh, to the left at 100 yards with the Hornady GMX Superformance. Not particularly impressive, particularly when you compare it to the Acubon group, which is unbelievable. That is one hole, three shots through the same hole. So you can't get better than that. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, we're done. For a hunting rifle, an economical hunting rifle, to have three shots through the same hole like that, it's unbelievable. But uh, that's where they hit. You can, on the other side of the board, you can see the three elongated holes, but you're looking at a group size Oh, good grief. I mean, it's just, uh, have to measure it a tenth of an inch, center to center, something like that. Certainly uh, smaller than the .277 bullet diameter uh, of the Winchester 270. Incredible accuracy and a great bullet to hunt with. That has done well in South Africa as well. So, so there it is. So, what's a fair, reasonable way to rate a gun like this? There's rebates from Browning. I believe last fall you could pick up this rifle without the scope. Uh, right at 400 bucks, something like that. So it goes for 400, four and a quarter. Uh, hardly the most expensive bolt action rifle you can buy. It's, it's not bad. I mean, I'll have to call it very good. Uh, the bolt itself uh, is not the smoothest. The trigger, give you an idea. Four pounds, 10 ounces. So that's adequate, it's an adequate hunting trigger, but it doesn't compare favorably to, uh, to the Accu trigger, it doesn't compare favorably to the Browning uh, feather light trigger that they put on their, on their X-Bolt. Um, it does have a palm swell here on the right, which I like, and it does have nice balance. So if you're not picky about your trigger or about the looks, obviously with the right ammo, in this case uh, the Winchester Acubond, uh, accuracy, there's, there's really uh, nothing more you could ask for in a hunting rifle. I mean, you're good to go with a 270 Winchester. If you're, if, you're, uh, if you're sighted in a couple inches high at 100 yards, you verify with your own rifle that certainly it's just center of the body and pull the trigger out to 320, 325 yards or so. No problem, just uh, hit the switch. So, um, like I said, there's a lot to like about it. The bolt is a little sticky. 
it's a little sticky grippy so um, you know I'm not thrilled about it nevertheless uh, it's reliable ejection is okay uh, the triggers adequate it's uh, it, it's certainly not superlative but all in all for the money it's a lot of rifle you can hunt about anything in North America with this and I have 270 Winchesters a uh, common versatile cartridge and uh, the gun itself not a heavy gun and the inflex pad does a nice job it doesn't even feel like you're shooting a high-powered rifle so with a couple caveats the plastic trigger the average trigger pull um, the plastic trigger guard some of the uh, the obviously really cheap concessions they they made to get the price down they're obviously putting good barrels on them and uh, with the right ammo they group so I'm gonna give it thumbs up although uh, you know there are more appealing rifles if in a hunting application it's really hard to wear out a bolt-action rifle big game hunting anyway I mean you may want to get a new rifle every every 20 or 30 years whether you need it or not but it's really hard to hard to wear them out unless you just throw them off a cliff or something like that so good job I mean it does outshoot several other economy grade models including Ruger um, it doesn't shoot significantly better than uh, oh, let's say the Axis model um, you would compare this to a synthetic stock uh, Weatherby um, for the price uh, also the regular Savage model 110 AccuTrigger with a synthetic stock uh, and this those would be uh, three really strong competitors if you're looking for a long action a long action rifle like a 270 Winchester so thanks a lot actually pretty good job for Browning to be fair versions of Hornady Superformance, some Winchester, and some Federal 130 grain Sierra Game King. We're going to try them through two different rifles today, the Weatherby Vanguard and also a Savage AccuStock, both in 270 Winchester. If you hear some noise in the background, that's, uh, that's the car with the air conditioning going so the dog can enjoy the air conditioned comfort. He prefers it that way. We'll start out with a Weatherby. As you can see, I've mounted a Citron Big Sky 3x9x42 scope, an excellent scope. And we're going to take a few shots just to make sure we're on the paper at uh, 26 yards. We'll do our course adjustments, repeat with the Savage, and then we'll, we'll move the target back out. Here's our first two spotter shots for the Weatherby, so it's no problem. Move things up about 4 inches, and we should be on the paper at 100 yards. So we'll, we'll repeat with the Savage and go from there. Here's our stainless steel Savage AccuStock. You can see we've got all the original factory stickers on it including the hang tags. We've just mounted a Bushnell Elite 3200 3x9x40. We should be fine for what we're doing today. Well, we'll take a couple spotter shots with Winchester power points, 150 grain, just the way we did with the Weatherby and then we'll move things out to 100 yards or so to see uh, see how they compare. As a result of our spotter shots, you can see that even though we mounted fresh scopes, so we're going in essentially blind, both the Weatherby and the Savage did about the same thing, both shooting, uh, both shooting low. So we'll crank up the scopes on both of them and we'll move it out to 100 yards. We've moved up to Citron 36 clicks, see if that keeps us on the paper. Obviously the target's been set back and we're changing ammo. It should shoot a little flatter. This is the Hornady 130 grain Superformance GMX. So we'll give it three shots and see if the Weatherby can produce some semblance of a, of a group. 
All right. There's the first three shots for the Weatherby. We're obviously on the paper. That's a good thing. We've got uh, two uh, two holes that are acceptably close together and uh, a flyer that's decidedly high. So we'll cover those up. We'll repeat the same procedure with the Savage and see how we do there. Same procedure with the Savage. Same range conditions, obviously. Uh, the same ammo, the Hornady. 130 grain to performance GMX and the same target so we'll uh, we'll see how they stack up obviously when you change ammo you change everything so well with the same ammo the Savage is obviously a better shooter we've got uh, not quite the same hole but about as close as uh, you can hope for just cracking off three shots uh, one shot low, but uh, the first two shots, bingo, it's, that's called one hole. So it's just one type of ammo, it doesn't really matter, you can see the uh, three black dots on the, the Weatherby shots, so when we change ammo, it can change everything. But with the Hornady GMX, no question, I mean, Savage is, is the better shooter based on these two example rifles and one type of ammo. So we'll. Uh, We'll try another another brand of ammo. We need to bring that Savage group down a little bit. Anyway. Another B, we're using Federal 130 grain Sierra, boat tail soft point, so totally different brand and bullet style. We're back to the Weatherby. We're going to take three quick shots, see how it does with the Federal stuff, and repeat with the Savage. A little more respectable job with the Weatherby. We're shooting. Yeah, just over an inch. We've got two holes right next to each other. So for hunting purposes out to 300 yards, there's not much that can live on the difference considering you've got an 8 to 10 inch kill zone on, on a whitetail on a deer sized animal. So that's uh, certainly good enough to hunt with. Uh, we'll see how the Savage does. But obviously this Weatherby anyway likes the Federal uh, ammo better than the Hornady GMX. But of course, your rifle may find the exact same opposite. Okay, same deal. Same Federal ammo with the Savage. We'll load it up, take three quick shots, and see what it does. This time we had the exact opposite result based on the ammo change for the Weatherby shot better than the Savage did with the Federal uh, Sierra 130 grain boat tails. So there you go. Pretty obvious that uh, both the Weatherby and the Savage, along with the recently reviewed Browning A Bolt 3, are more than accurate for any uh, big game hunting application. But ammo makes a difference, so you're going to have to go through five or six different types of ammo to find out uh, what the magic combination is. That's part of the fun of it. So, Based on one ammo or the other, you could say the Savage is more accurate, you could say the Weatherby is more accurate. They're both excellent guns, and Weatherby, Savage, and Browning over the last 40, 50 gun reviews, they consistently, uh, in the, the value category anyway, are just terrific shooters. So what's a fair and reasonable way to compare these two rifles? They're both excellent. You have a little bit longer barrel length with the Weatherby. That means slightly higher velocities. I like that. The Weatherby feels better to me, personally, um, primarily because of the Monte Carlo cheek piece. So it fits me better, and it just feels better than the Savage. Uh, they're both essentially equally accurate. It would take many, many different types of ammo to, uh, to come up with the difference. So uh, accuracy isn't an issue with either one. I generally do like a detachable magazine like the Savage has. However, the Weatherby feeds a little bit more smoothly than the Savage. Both have smooth bolts. Um, the roughest bolt of, of the three, meaning these two rifles and the Browning AB3, the roughest bolt is the Browning. But uh, with use, it's slicked up a little bit. So a lot of this is personal preference. Uh, Neither of these rifles are harsh shooters by any means. 270 Winchester is, is, a, is a fun cartridge and an effective cartridge. But in this case, the Savage is softer shooting. 
a little bit more generous uh, pad there. So uh, the, the current recoil pad that Savage is putting on their thermoplastic stock guns is, is very, very good. So a little softer shooting with the Savage, a little smoother action um, as far as feeding, and a little better ejection on the Weatherby, although there's no problems with either one. So uh, you do have a better grip surface on the Savage because it's molded in sharp checkering so it grips your hands better and that's going to be better in uh, snowy icy conditions than uh, than the weather bee which is not quite as grippy so you can make a case for either one but i'll tell you they're both excellent excellent values excellent rifles and uh i think most anybody would be happy with either one of these two they're just uh they're excellent guns considering mm -hmm. they're uh they're not expensive, they're just off the rack guns, nothing special. Bolt on a couple scopes and just poke paper. So for uh, big game hunting, excellent choices, either one. Try a few shots with the Remington hypersonic and see what happens. <laughs> 